All right, today we're going to be talking about the impact that wind has on wildfire. And I've been waiting to talk about this one because it's definitely one of the most important variables when it comes to how extreme your fire behavior is going to be and the direction your fire is going to move. And out of the three fire weather variables, temperature, wind, and humidity, I would say wind is the hardest to predict and also the most variable. So can often be the big wild card in the forecast. So I think before we get into kind of the different types of wind, it should be useful to just say what wind is and where it comes from. So typically wind pops up when you have differences in temperature, which create differences in pressure. And then the larger the difference in temperature between two points, or the larger the difference in pressure between two points, the faster your winds are going to be. The way I always explain this is, if you have a small slope, and let's say the pressure difference there is pretty minimal, your wind is going to be flowing from the high to the low pressure somewhat gradually. So you could think of this like if you have a tray and you slightly tilt it up and you pour a little water on the tray, the water is going to flow to the other side, but it's not going to be going all that quickly. If you have a very large pressure difference over a very small distance, that's almost like if you tilted that tray at up to 70 degrees and then poured the water on it, the water is going to move a lot faster. That's exactly what's happening with wind in the atmosphere. And the, the earth is never thermally uniform. I think that's a good way to put it. So there's always some kind of wind flowing to try to balance the atmosphere out, even though the atmosphere will never be completely balanced out because there's always differential heating and temperature. So that's what is wind. Now we can ask, how does wind impact wildfire? First thing that pops up into my mind is, actually the other day I was at the beach, we did a little bonfire, and when I was first getting the fire started, you can actually see this on the show Survivor as well, where when you're trying to get the first little leaves to catch before it goes into your maybe twigs and then before it goes into your logs, you can get it on some leaves and then sometimes you'll blow on the fire and then it'll get the rest of the leaf to catch and then it goes into your twigs and you kind of keep blowing and as you blow, the flame kind of, it almost breathes life into it. And the reason for this is because you're providing more oxygen to the fire. So that's one way that winds can impact wildfires. It provides more oxygen, which promotes combustion. Now, another thing that actually happened at that bonfire is the overall winds were pretty strong that day, especially earlier in the afternoon. So what was happening was some of the leaves that I'd put in to help start the fire that were now on fire were being lifted up by the wind and then dropping on our blankets or in our bags. And we had to, you know, stomp them out or push them off the blanket, kind of bury them in, in some sand. Now, what that means on a more wildfire topic or, wild, or in an actual landscape is that's going to be your spot fires. And that's maybe the biggest impact that wildfire and wind have is winds can pick up those burning embers, toss them in some cases miles ahead of the major blaze, start a new little fire, and then that can just overwhelm firefighting resources. And in some cases, it can ruin a lot of the progress that we've made on a fire. I remember on the Dixie fire specifically, they had this amazing fuel break that they made on the entire northern side of the fire. They had been burning out the fuel for a number of days. And then one day, we had very strong southerly winds, and it picked up some burning embers. It threw it over this fuel break, started some new spot fires, and then it took off 15 miles in one day. So that shows the importance of spot fires, but then the winds themselves can just push the fire forward. It's often going to decide the direction of spread. Notice I said on that Dixie fire day, we had southerly winds and then it pushed the fire to the north. So if actually that's another good thing to say. When I say southerly wind, I'm sure most of you know this, but the, the name of the wind is in reference to the direction it's coming from. 
So a southerly wind will push a fire to the north, or a westerly wind will push a fire to the east. It also might bring in some moisture, though, if you're along the California coast. That's a little tangent, just a good thing to know, and it actually will come up later when we talk about valley winds. So just other ways that wind impacts wildfire. It can also heat up the vegetation in front of the fire. Think about that. If you don't have any wind, heat likes to rise. So here's your fire. All the heat's just going to be lifted up and going straight up into the atmosphere. If you have windy conditions, it's going to take some of that heat and blow it sideways and heat up and dry out some of your vegetation before the fire gets there, which will allow the fire to not use as much of its energy to evaporate the moisture out of the fuels. They would have already been evaporated, and then it can just use that energy to combust the flame or the fuel, and then the flames just are able to move a lot faster. Then, very similar to that, it also tilts the flames over. So not even just carrying the heat, it also actually just brings the flames closer to the vegetation in front of the fire, so then obviously that's going to increase your heating and drying of your fuels, which increases your fire spread. So I think those are the main ways that winds impact fire. Now we can talk about a couple different types of winds. Main one that I'm going to mention in that's often in a negative connotation is a valley wind. So what happens here? is imagine a valley and then you have your hillsides or your mountain slopes. During the afternoon, the mountain slopes are going to heat up more than the valley because they're getting more direct sunlight. And then that's going to create your pressure difference. Or actually, we won't even go into pressure. We'll just say mountain slopes heat up more. So the air becomes very warm. It becomes less dense and it rises up. Then it has to be replaced by something. So you have winds flowing from the valley up the mountain slope. Now the reason I said this can often be a bad, if you wanna use the term bad wind for fire behavior, is because your fire already likes to go up slope because of that flame tilting aspect that I was just talking about where it heats up the vegetation before the fire gets there, evaporates the moisture, makes it easier for the fire to spread. So your fire is already like going up slope so then when you add on this, what you'd call a valley wind, since it's coming from the valley, that's going to almost be a double whammy for leading to fast uphill spread of your fire during the afternoons. Now, it also depends on which direction your slope or your mountainside is facing. So to think about this, your sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So in the morning, your east facing slopes are going to have the direct sunlight, but it's not going to be all that intense. Then in the afternoon, when your sunlight is the most intense, it's going to be hitting your south facing slopes. And then even as you get into late afternoon, your southwesterly slopes will be getting the most intense heating of the day. And then your west facing slopes, that's when the sun is setting. Again, not as intense. So where you have your hillsides heating up the most is going to be on those slopes facing south because that's the most intense sunlight that you pick up throughout the day. So that's where you're gonna have the most rising air. That's where you're gonna have the most air rushing up from the valley. So you would have the fastest fire spread in the afternoon. Now, what is also interesting is you can have the opposite thing happen at nighttime. So at nighttime, your mountain slopes are going to cool down faster than the valley. So that's gonna to lead to some dense air up on your mountain slopes, and then that's going to sink down into the valley. So that can actually lead to a down, a down slope wind, if you wanna call it that. So you'll often see this diurnal pattern on wildfires, and this is something that I use in wildfire forecasts anytime I'm talking about some valley or some canyon, and then what the fire is going to do during the day and night. And there's often this pattern where it moves up the hillsides during, or up the valley or up the canyon during the day, and then it changes direction at night and moves the opposite direction at nighttime because of this differential heating. 
So during nighttime, up, up slope, and it's the double whammy because fire already likes to go up slope. And then during nighttime, you'd have what you call a backing fire moving down the slope. So that, again, can lead to some pretty extreme fire behavior in the afternoons. And you often hear about wind and the danger it brings to wildfire. It's often a big part of red flag warnings. Oh, you have big gusts and low relative humidity, high fire danger out there. But then there is the question, is wind ever a good thing for a wildfire? And I can think of two examples where you could think that wind would be a good thing. So, and one of these can actually also be a bad example. So, one of, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So the one that's just purely good is if you have what's called a sea breeze. So this is going to be, you again, you name wind based on where it's coming from. So a sea breeze comes from the sea. So this often happens in the afternoons, which would typically be your worst wildfire time of the day, where your inland areas heat up a bunch. So the air becomes warmer, less dense, it rises up, and then wind or the atmosphere wants to balance things out. It wants to fill that vacuum that was just created at the surface inland. So then some of the air rushes in from the ocean to take its place. Now when that happens, it's going to bring the cool, moist air that was just sitting over the ocean, and it's going to bring it over your coastal cities and cool things down. A lot of times this is what you'd call the marine layer. Now, this is obviously good in terms of wildfire. Cooler temperatures, brings in some moisture, some of that moisture finds its way into your fuels. So if you heard of winds picking up in the afternoon, but it was coming from the ocean, that's actually a good thing. And then also with the marine layer, if you have a very shallow marine layer, so let's say, I believe a thousand feet would be a shallow marine layer, that's not that much of a volume of air to heat up. So that'll usually, the clouds will usually burn off in the afternoon and then you have some sunshine. But if you have a very deep marine layer, those clouds can just stick around all day long. So you get less sunlight coming in and then it keeps things cooler and your wildfire activity is diminished. So onshore breeze, sea breeze, whatever you wanna call it, that would be good for fire. Now I did just mention something about how if you have clouds, you're not gonna have as much daytime heating. So that is one thing that's going to keep your wildfire activity down. And it also doesn't have to just be clouds. It can also be smoke as well. And this ties into the final aspect where you could view this as wind could be good and bad. So if you have or I'll actually just use the vocab terms that I learned first. The two new vocab words that I learned today are mixing height and transport winds. So this is talking about wildfire smoke and air quality. That's kind of the subject we're going into right now. So your mixing height is going to be the height that your smoke is able to mix up into, pretty, pretty well named. And then your transport winds are going to be the average speed and direction that your winds are blowing within that mixing kind of mixing layer. I think that's a good way to put it. So the best kind of wind you would have in this situation would be transport winds that really pick up as it gets to the top of that mixing height. So that's going to allow the smoke to rise really high above the surface. And then you have the winds, they just take it and they disperse it downwind. And that's going to lead to good air quality. So winds picking up in the afternoon is often a good thing in terms of air quality because it blows the smoke out of there. Now this is where winds can also be bad though because at nighttime your winds calm down and then that smoke is able to settle down to the surface and then that can lead to some pretty poor air quality during the early morning hours. And this is something that we did just see uh, across the central coast where Northwestern there was fires in northwestern California. Northerly winds were blowing that smoke up at the higher altitudes, up at that mixing height during the day. So we didn't really notice much during the day, but then at nighttime, the winds calmed down, all the smoke settled down to the surface, and we had some hazardous air quality at some points over the last couple of weeks. So 
how the the reason I was saying this wind could be a good and a bad thing when you're thinking about smoke is it's good in terms of air quality because it blows the smoke out of there. So more winds would actually be a good thing. But then at the same time, you could also think that more winds could also be a bad thing if you're actually just talking about your fire behavior. So it's good for air quality, but you actually might want that smoke layer in place if you want your fire to calm down. Because of what I said earlier, if you have a lot of smoke, you have less sunlight coming in, less heating up throughout the day, less wind, typically you have higher relative humidity. So yeah, two sides to every coin. If you want good air quality, you want that wind to blow out the smoke, but if you want less smoke to be produced because your fire is not as active, then you would probably want that smoke to stay in place and maybe just deal with the bad air quality. So I think that's enough about wind and wildfire for today. The next section in this textbook, Fire in California's Ecosystems, is going to be going into the more kind of extreme wind cases. So that's what tomorrow's video is going to be on. You can stay tuned for that. Hopefully you learned something throughout the course of this video today. And thanks for watching.